Hello everyone, my name is Mikey and today I will be doing a how to get out of silver guide and uh, I just made a video not too long ago about how to get out of bronze and I want to refer you to that if you are looking to get out of silver because I think there are some very valuable tips and a much larger guide but I wanted to make uh, some special amendments to the bronze video uh, for silver players. Uh, so let's jump right into it. So. In my opinion, uh, silver players now understand the game on a pretty basic level. Uh, many of the failures of bronze players carry over, but there is less kill chasing and more of a priority on objectives and winning the game. So uh, when people joke that like it's a bronze clown fiesta, it's usually because like people are doing things to maybe cheese kills, but it adds it actually doesn't add to anything in the game. So they're getting kills, but it you get kills to get objectives and uh, people think that kills matter more but anyways so you need to further uh, level up your macro skill so objective priority and uh, understanding what to do out of laning phase laning phase is pretty easy to uh, know what you need to do uh, whereas like you know you hit your minions you trade you try to kill the guy uh, you avoid ganks but to further level that up um, you need to be able to know what to do out of uh, laning phase, so split pushing and team fighting and objective control. And uh, make sure you are at least mechanically able on a couple decent champs and a couple rolls. So uh, macro mistakes are the biggest key here, but the micro, which is the mechanics, uh, is still pretty important. You do have silver players, I mean, it's the average elo. So, they know how to play their champions. They can hit their abilities uh, way more than bronze. They're getting mechanically proficient. In my opinion, silver players are mechanically equal to a lot of gold players, uh, even high gold. It's just their game knowledge and macro isn't anywhere near where it needs to be to uh, use that mechanics. Uh, so you need to study higher level play and the decision making that will win you more games. So, um, you know, prioritizing objectives and uh, which we'll get into more later and also uh, how to push your advantages. So number two here is matchups become much more important. So you have players who are actually somewhat proficient with their mechanics, especially one tricks. And uh, you need to be able to match mechanically on your selected champ. So hitting abilities, timing abilities, understanding good and bad matchups. So matchups are huge, especially if you play lanes like top lane, mid lane, and even bot lane uh, in this you know jungle as well. But you need to know like, okay, am I killing this guy early? Can I kill him early? Uh, do I need to just farm? Uh, when to give up CS to avoid getting really chunked out of lane? So things like that become very important. Uh, know that like, for example, I'll give you a top lane example. If you're playing against an early game Olaf, be careful. Uh, if he hits a few axes on you and then can chase you down and finish you off, and if you win like a really bad trade, you know, you got to pot up and uh, play back a little bit. Uh, know the jungle timers uh, when certain junglers are going to be in your lane. So like in top lane, I'll give another example. Uh, I think around two minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, generally, if a jungler starts, it goes uh, blue, wolves, red. Uh, that's when they'll be looking top lane. So just know in, like which junglers clear fast, which junglers clear slow and kind of be ready for the gank then um, and look less appetizing. Or you could try to draw the gank and know that you can still get out. So I want to talk a little bit about late game. Late game is still a complete absolute mess. So throws are rampant and you need to be the one to try and get your team to make the correct calls and to not throw so you need to be the shot caller now in bronze you can get away with it uh, you can ping occasionally but um, you need to be the shot caller now so study macro and if you study macro at all it'll put you way ahead of the pack in terms of shot calling so I discourage spam pinging but sometimes that's the only way to convey information to players out of position um, and also a little keynote here is be specifically careful around Baron fights and don't coin flip um, try to get an early advantage if going for an early Baron and consider how fast your comp can take it. So if you have like a Cassiopeia or an Azir and like a Tristana, you take it pretty fast. If you have a Jin and a Vigar um, as your carries, you won't take it fast. So you need to take that into account. I remember back like when I was in bronze, silver, when I started out and then even in gold, uh, a lot of people, if Baron's up and 5v5 is around it, the team closest to it will be like, okay, we just have to start Baron, uh, even if it's like 22 minutes into the game. 
um, they get like real jittery. Like, okay, we just got, someone's got to start it. This is what the pro teams do. But really what you'll notice when you get into higher level of play, like even high gold and like low platinum, uh, you'll still see a lot of people like, okay, we need to win a team fight and then Baron's our prize. Uh, so they'll kill the jungler or they'll kill two people. You take a tower, you go to Baron and then you back. Another big thing to be wary of is don't try to make plays right after Baron. Go back, reset, spend your gold. Everybody just got 300 gold. You have a Baron buff. You might have taken some damage from the Baron or the team fight before. So get your Baron, get out, reset and try to make a decision as a team from there. I see it all the time. Uh, low elo players, they get a Baron, and the team that's uh, coming up, you know, they'll have three or four people coming after them, and uh, they'll try to fight them. Like, oh, we have Baron now. And that's not the case. What happens generally is... You'll get Baron, uh, you'll choose a fight without backing, uh, you'll lose the fight, and then all your uh, Baron buffs are gone. And that's just, you're just throwing away your lead. That's why uh, higher elo players can generally pressure games. They kind of like Boa Constrict. You know, they get objectives and they get Baron, so they take towers, and the tower taking allows them to take the enemy jungle and starve the enemy jungler. It's just like a Boa Constrictor, and you can see really good teams, like even an LCS, do this, and they just constrict it down to their base, and then they get another Baron and they constrict it even further, and they start cracking the base. So it, it's more methodical than just run at everything you see and try to get kills. So number four, continue to follow pro guides and builds, but be, now you're uh, able to make adjustments based on enemy team composition and bronze. Just pick a build guide and follow it every game. Um, that's just one less thing you have to worry about. And uh, I think, like, you know, just follow the runes. But now uh, you're able to be a little more decisive with that. So know that if you're in an AP matchup, you buy AP or MR items first or you know uh, maybe an item with uh, AD or AP and MR like know um, what would be good into your matchup if you're a tank uh, you know make sure you're building the right items and uh, follow still follow the path but maybe uh, build some items earlier than maybe a pro built it um, and what's good too is if you can even look up specific builds for the lane assignments. So know a few champions that are really popular top lane and know what really is good to build against them. Like Tabby's uh, Bramble Vest into Fiora, but you don't finish Bramble Vest, Bramble Vest into Thornmail. Uh, Thornmail is not the best item. It's definitely not a good first item. But those are two items that you can build to kind of counter Fiora in the top lane. Number five, I would recommend carry oriented champs. You need to outweigh lanes or jungle that might be underperforming. So I kind of ran into this problem in plat uh, where I'm at where you, you kind of need to take the reins. And I understand this obviously in high diamond and low diamond, everybody can play their role pretty efficiently, but you still get people that creep up into like plat and especially like in bronze and silver and gold who don't really know how to play their role and you can't really count on them to know if they're strong or weak. They might just they just think they always do the same amount of damage at a certain stage of the game, regardless of how laning phase went. And uh, you need to play something that can carry a little harder. And so these are the harder champs and the more skill expressive champs. But learning skill expressive champs can uh, be a huge advantage. Uh, you might want to play Riven, Fiora. Uh, these are a few um, like Pantheon, um, who's an early game champ, like something where you can put your top laner behind and start impacting the map. So your goal as like a top laner, take tower, kill the guy, take tower, make him useless, you know, reset after a killer, reset after you, kill, you know, like push him out of lane, do some turret damage and back and come back, things like that, or like in bot lane, um, play like especially if you're a support play things like brand zyra velkaz um you can play you know your standard tank uh supports and do just fine but i think being a little more proactive and a little more aggro especially out of passive roles uh like the jungle can sometimes be passive and uh, the supports can sometimes play a little too passive and even top laners are accused of this of just playing tanks and in my opinion to climb fast you need to do something that can outplay the enemy team 
So number six, uh, I made a whole video on this, but keep your attitude in check as much as possible. It's a frustrating game, especially in silver when there's so many throws and people that want to quit and they don't understand if you're in the game or not. They just think it's over after first blood. Like there's a lot of crazy stuff like that. But just try to keep it in check as much as possible. Mute all if you need to. I have a whole video just dis uh, discussing that if you want to look a little more in depth on that. Number seven is a big one. Uh, in bronze, silver, and gold, I would recommend not forfeiting. Uh, silver has too many throw opportunities. I understand forfeiting in higher elo um, where players can close games with much more position, precision, but not in silver. So like when you watch your streamers, you see Skara and the really good players and they FF. And you think, okay, well, if my game is going like this, I should FF too. And that's not the case because challenger or master players are a whole different breed. Um, they're more like pro players and they know how to close games. They know objective control. So when if you give... Let's say you started a bronze game and then you started a challenger game and you gave one side all a thousand gold. The challenge game, the cha uh, the challenger game would win. Uh, the end, the game would end much quicker than the bronze game. They know how to take advantages and win games. Uh, whereas in silver and bronze, especially, that's just not the case. There's so many throws and people just don't understand how much they can get on each push or from each advantage. So I just wouldn't forfeit. Um, try to encourage players who want to forfeit to not forfeit, um, especially in stomps, man. I just don't think it's it's worth doing in silver. There's so many games that you could win just because people are so bad, like, uh, like at closing games out. Like, you can really do some damage. Uh, number eight kind of talks. It's a little bit um, tied in with a few of the others, but you can try to abuse late game scaling champions like Vigar, Nasa, Shivana, Azir, Vayne, um, Gangplank is one. And or, yeah, and if you can play them well enough, um, I would definitely give them a shot. Uh, you don't have the early pressure, so you can't roll over the game, but generally bronze and silver games go a lot longer. Um, than higher elo games and the charts might not say this but they don't actually counter uh factor in forfeits and lower elo players do forfeit a lot uh, it's kind of just the instinct to do so uh, i would recommend trying some late game champions and knowing that you need to play a little more passive and to f it, it'll help you learn to focus on farm which is your most important thing in the game no matter what elo you're at your farm getting your experience playing cal more calculated and trying to, it, it can sometimes inspire hope in your team like if you have a fed vein like okay even if we're behind if the rest of the team's behind this vein could still carry uh they're obviously the m sometimes more difficult champs a little more skill expressive champs um and require like a uh, more skill set to be able to play them but this is something you could definitely try to do and in my opinion, in very low elo, it can just completely roll over teams. Just expect your games to go a little longer. And another big thing, like Jax is another one, and Trindamir. Another another thing is that uh, you can just try to stall games until you hit your power spikes and then kind of surprise the enemy team. And if you get a few kills early just because you're good on that champ, uh, it just snowballs you even further. And number nine is kind of the last thing I want to say, and that's have fun and try to improve every game. You are in the average ELO, so you're an average league player. Like, you're doing pretty good. You're, you understand the basic concepts of the game. And even if you might know them at a higher level, uh, you're applying them. Your application of them might not be the best. So hopefully you can identify your mistakes and can uh, really find room for improvement. Uh, enjoy this time before things start getting more by the book and repetitive. So as you climb higher and higher, higher way past where I'm at even, ELO-wise, uh, when you start getting into like high diamond uh, and stuff like that, and even in plat and gold, it's like this. It's, um, it's more calculated. People want you to play uh, good picks. Uh, they stress that more, whereas in lower ELO, people generally don't care as much. Um, they want you to play good picks, build a certain way. Uh, they, it's, it's very calculated. You kind of know where the game's at. You know if you're winning or losing and what you need to do to get back in. You're at a stage where you might not know. And that's kind of a cool thing because uh, it's, a, it's less figured out. There's more figuring out for you to do. And that's always fun when you can learn and understand like you have your little victories where you understand oh I can kill this guy as this champion level three or four like 
Like, I didn't know that before. I was just playing too passive. Uh, whereas, like, better and better players know what everyone can do, and they play around that strongly. So if there's a, if you're laning against a strong early game champion, they play very passive, and they don't give you an opportunity to snowball. So enjoy this time. Like, don't be discouraged because you're in a lower elo. Uh, just, just enjoy the fact that there's a lot of room to grow. And if you think you know everything, you don't. And uh, most players don't until they get extremely high elo. Uh, you can just do your best each game. And try to make your mechanics a little better, your champ pool a little better, understanding of the game a little better, objective control a little better. All these things that I listed on here, numbers one through nine, uh, will help you get out of silver. I'll make specific guides in the future for getting out of gold and plaid and stuff like that as I, you know, as I can. But um, definitely watch the get out of bronze video because I cover the big things. And these are more just amendments and special situations for silver players. Yeah, like because bronze and silver, I think there's a substantial gap. And I think that gap mainly comes out of uh, mechanics and a decent amount of game knowledge. Um, and as we climb up uh, through the ranks with this little kind of sub-series I'm doing with these guides, uh, I'll be making special amendments for each elo and kind of what holds people back and where their weaknesses are for that specific elo. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check out my channel for more League of Legends content, and I hope you have a great day. Talk to you later, guys.